Hi everyone, this is Matt from drawingtutorialsonline.com. I wanted to take a moment and share with you a coaching critique. Sean recently signed up for my one month coaching. He's three weeks in and I asked him if I could share this video with you and he said yes. Now this is a coaching critique. It takes a little bit longer than the member critiques. Uh, the way that I teach people and help artists grow is three ways. I basically uh, teach on drawingtutorialsonline.com. I also offer one-to-one -one coaching coaching services, as well as teaching at the School of Visual Arts for 22 uh, of the past years. So I, I, I see a, a diverse group of students. And uh, if you're interested in learning more about the one-to-one -one coaching, uh, stay tuned at the end of the video. I'll talk about it a little bit more if you stick with me that long. I think this is like 22 minutes. Uh, it's, it's really long. But if you're interested in digital painting, specifically portraits, uh, I think you might find this interesting. So let, let's dive into it. Hey, Sean, listen, this is like your best one so far. I, it, it really, really, you did a great job. You know, you did a great job with the background. You did a great job with the color. You did a very much, much better job with your edges. Um, it's definitely Princess Leia. So Leia, and I, I love it. Like the atmosphere, the color, everything about it is just like spot on. Um, now, with all that being said, this is your best one, and I really dig it. It's my job to really pick it apart so you can learn from me picking it apart. And, uh, I, you know, you pick and choose out of what I say that you like and you run with that. And things that I say that you disagree with, you kind of just put them to the side and you don't have to utilize that. And uh, I understand this is not about perfection and this is not about making the portrait become like this realistic polished thing so it's better that I kind of go over the top a little bit and really nitpick it to death uh, and then you pick and choose out of everything that I said that you like and what you don't like so I'm just going to kind of randomly um, go all over the place I'll, I'll try to make a list so it's not too random okay so the big thing for me the big thing for me is the edge discrepancy you have this absolutely, let me get the right brush. I'm gonna kind of do this on layers this time. You have this absolutely perfect edge. I mean, that's a perfect edge. However, you remember that you did the edge on that side is really the way that you wanna do your edges. And then, so that I'm gonna call that the perfect edge. And then you have major, major, major edge discrepancy where this edge is, to use a very harsh word, it's terrible compared to, <laughs> compared to this edge. So this edge is perfect and this edge is terrible because it's so rough and it's, uh, and I'm exaggerating, of course. Uh, and it's the, it's okay to have diversity in your edges because, you know, your goal is not to do this uh, or, uh, academic 9,000 hour uh, traditional painting. It's not about that. And I understand. But here's the thing. Okay. When you have a discrepancy in your edges that are that close together. Okay. So you have perfect, 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 perfect. And then right next to it, you have jaggedy and hard so this is soft and fluid and this is jaggedy and hard and it's right next to one another so that's why you have to be aware so let, let, let's say your edge is where you have a landscape or you have a portrait okay and then in the background is the mountains and all stuff in the background and your edges look one way in the foreground and your edges look another way in the background that's okay because the distances are very far away. This distance is too close and you can't go from the perfect edge to the unperfect edge that close to one another. Does that make sense? Now, um, it's just smoothing out that edge a little bit more. Now, this edge also on the neck, I think is very jaggedy but it's not so close to this edge. So maybe that's going to be the part that's going to be a little bit more jaggedy. But still, I, I still would consider number one, um, smooth edge. That's too thick of a brush. Consistent. Let's just put consistent. Okay. So I would 
make the edge of her neck, the edge of her chin, the same consistency that you have over here. Okay, Matt, I got it. Okay, what else you got for me? Okay, so that's number one, that you've improved immensely on your edges. You just got to be more consistent with them. Now I'm looking over my notes. So let's go back to this chin because this chin truly is the culprit in, in your piece. So if we go and we work on Princess Leia piece, let me get a smaller brush. Is it Leia or Princess Leia, not Leah? Let's just go center line. Center line. It's always easy to find the center line on the lips because of that little divot. Center line. Center line. So this, she has got a little tiny chin. She's got like a movie star chin. Small chin. This is the angle for the jaw. That's very symmetrical. And then the vertical angle for the jaw. Okay. So the jaw is going to be made up of those three angles. The chin shares the third angle. This, the vertical. This and this got to be equal in their tilt. And then when we tilt the cheekbone, that's going to be equal as well. So the chin is the culprit. The chin is the culprit. So you have the vertical angle, then this, and then the chin becomes too long. It's not that movie star chin. And then you're kind of kicking that in a little bit more. Gravity's drooping that down. So you're creating a little bit of a different look. So she's young. She's a, a movie star. And she has that jawbone. She has the skinny little chin. And, and this is just a little bit more about the symmetry of the chin. And I think it's just, again, this is the area on your painting that's the culprit. That is making your piece not look as good as it really is. Okay? Um... Now that chin area, this you, what, what you're doing unintentionally and by accident, in my opinion, is that you have this dark next to the reflected light underneath the chin with a hard edge. So whenever you have a dark next to a light with a hard edge, that's where my eye is going to look. So my eye looks tremendously down at that chin. So now when we look at the Princess Leah piece, um, yes, totally. Lights coming down, bouncing off of the fabric, bouncing into the underplane of the chin. It's just a smoother, yes, this does kind of come up a little bit. It's just much smoother, much less contrastier. See the jaggedness over here and the dark next to the light with the hard edge? This is just all very much smooth. Okay, so let me make a couple new layers here. Layer, layer. Let's go to this one. So consistent edge, at least on one side. Okay, number two is that jaw slash chin you always want to look for those three angles it's always going to be the three angles and uh, they're symmetrical and um, be careful of the reflected lights don't get out of control so I would say that this reflected light over here is a little bit out of control because it's right next to the dark and so I keep looking at one of the worst areas of your piece Okay, reflected light in its place. Cool. What else can we talk about in your painting? L let's talk about the, the neck into the collar for the head placement and the head tilt. So here, here's her neck. And it's going into the trapezius, and we can't see that because the collar is there. The neck into the shoulder. You have to try to visualize that neck into the trapezius. And I, with your portrait, so, okay, so her neck is tilted this way. And the collar is tilted 
that that aways. I think you have exaggerated that too much in the piece. And so you have to kind of do a little bit of cheating to make the portrait look a little bit more believable that that head is on the shoulders. So how would I do that? Okay, so over here, I might drop this curve and I might tilt this collar to make it really tilt with her neck and uh, this it's this line you just gotta sync that up with the curve of that collar and that would help to really make that neck believable um, the shoulder is going kind of off a little bit, so I think you just got to widen that shoulder a little bit more. It's a little too sh uh, short, I think, for her. Be careful with that. So that was about syncing up the neck with the collar and trying to visualize the neck underneath the collar. So you could use a gesture line. Um, under the collar okay okay so now let, let's talk about one that I think is absolutely the most important portrait thing that a lot of people get tripped up with and that is these eyebrows and the nostrils okay now with eyebrows there's always going to be a gradation. So this part of the eyebrow is darker. This part of the eyebrow is always going to be lighter. Always is a very powerful word, but most of the time. Now, on the other side, I feel it's the same thing. So this part of the eyebrow is darker. And then there's a reflected light hitting here, and you've captured that. So that's making that part of the eyebrow a little bit lighter. You can't make the eyebrows... This, you didn't make the eyebrows the same value across. That is darker, that is lighter. It needs to be lighter still. And this is darker and that is lighter. It needs to be lighter still. Okay. Nostrils, when you put that dark of a nostril with that hard of an edge, it's just a no-no. So make nostrils lighter and put that turn it into that underplane with a little bit of a softer edge. So that goes back to, I'm all over the place with my layers here. I'm screwing up. <laughs> I did drew that on the layer um, two. That's okay. Let's keep going here. So gradation in eyebrow. No black in nostril, softer nostril edges because they're in the shadow. So that nostril is just on her is way too intense and I uh, keep looking at that nostril. If we turn it upside down I'm gonna guarantee we look at the chin and the nostril. Image, rotation, I look at her eye, no doubt, and I look at the nostril, and I look at the chin. So I look here first, which is a great thing, here, here, and I look here, because it's a dark next to a light with hard edges. Now this is a dark next to a light, but you've got a beautiful soft edge, okay? What else you got for me, Matt? Um, let me look at my notes. This is the light side. This is the shadow side. You do not want to make the whites of the eyes equal in their value. So technically, that white of the eye is in the shadow. You want to get rid of that white of the eye. OK, 
okay and uh, that just makes the head turn a little bit more I didn't do a really good job of it and let me just kind of go with dark and let me just be a little bit more consistent so now the head turns and the white the white of the eye is still white but it's yeah you gotta be careful because that you're what you're doing is you're putting hard edges and contrast in the shadow and you just want that to turn that enables the head to turn around from the light side into the shadow side and when you put that light there and I'm exaggerating of course it prevents the head from turning and now the head starts to become flat okay now um, just looking at my notes again Sean this one is really excellent and and I and I love it a lot um, let me close now this is the understanding that this is just more for teaching purposes and not that you're gonna do what I say because your piece is gonna be much looser and it's not gonna be this academic crazy thing think about her braid as a cylinder and this shadow side of that cylinder would really make that braid look more three-dimensional okay and uh, so it continues behind her ear it actually continues up so this is cylindrical and this is the shadow and that's the light shadow light now the main line that separates gets a little dicey over here. It's a little confusing, very confusing, very confusing. But I, I could go back and I can refine that, but everything to the right just needs to be the shadow. Okay, you're, this is for me personally a little too light. I, I can deal with the reflected light being light like that. That's kind of cool. But just, yeah, be careful. Now, another thing that will help you tremendously with your portraits. So if we come over here all the way to the right and you go to the color, the red swatches all the way on the top right of Photoshop. So this is our, our dark, dark middle tones, middle tone, light middle tones, light. So what is really important, so if, if 10 is pure white, you want your forehead to be the 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 7, okay? You never want to have that chin as light as the um, forehead. And the reason for that is the person's head is an oval and it turns kind of something like that and it starts to turn under and so this is catching all of the bright light the forehead the cheekbone and that will really help your portraits now I'm gonna say that I would make this my lightest second lightest third lightest okay that will help you so much Think about just, um, let me color pick a color here. Let's just go with that brown. Think about this as just being all eye socket. You don't want to give her a black eye like what I just did. But everything around there is just going to be slightly darker. So if we go back to that skull, and the purpose for drawing the skull is um, that's the zygomatic arch. This is that eye socket. Brow bone turns under.
that's the eye socket. This would be that part of the nose that looks very strange on a skull cylinder. Brow bone turning underneath. Big, huge, round forehead. Three angles for the jaw. Trying to visualize the skull right now. Just turning around over there. Maybe I can move that over to the left, just the touch, center line. So the reason why I just did that is just to show you, this is where that light is on the cheekbone and everything in this vicinity of her eyes is just gonna be darker because it's in the eye socket. When you put those whites of the eyes next to those dark eyelash lines, you could you you could have fun and, and you don't need to be like true to the photo and you can brighten up her eyes. Just gotta be careful when you do it with hard edges and you put the white next to the really dark kind of eye makeup. And uh, just think about this as turning cylinder. Okay, very soft over here, very soft. So just look at some of these things as ovals. So that's an oval. That's a little small oval. Okay. I think you did great. You know, I keep looking at the portrait and you pick and choose out of everything that I just said there. Um, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, I, I really do feel that nostril, if you lighten up that, if you do three things on this portrait, it'd really be killer. And I'm going to number them for you. So you choose whether or not you want to do this. Number one, lighten that nostril, soften it, put the underplane there. Number two, lighten that part of her eyebrow. Uh, number three, get rid of the white of the eye and maybe soften some of those darks in the shadow. Uh, number four, soften that chin and just make it the same edge quality as the side of her face. Number five, trash that light on her collar and turn the collar. That's it. If you do those five things, that portrait is going to be so much better. Okay. Uh, didn't talk so much about the lips. Just over here on the lips, you want the lip to be very similar and a softer edge to the light. This is a little bit of a hard edge over here. I might just lighten the lips right over there so they blend with the face. Obviously, I can keep talking, keep talking, but I think that's enough for this critique. I think you did an amazing job. You know, I'm looking at my skull, and I don't really like this. This has got to be a little bit wider over there. Okay? I could keep going, honestly, but... I, I love what you did. It's your best one so far. Beautiful job. Let's move on to the next one. All right. Thank you so much for watching that video. I really do appreciate it. I hope that you learned something from it. And I want to thank Sean once again for sharing that, uh, allowing me to share this coaching critique with you. Uh, he's doing great. He's three weeks into a one month coaching cycle. If you want to learn more about the coaching, basically how it works is that I offer one month coaching. You sign up and I critique your artwork. We set a, a game plan. We set goals. Uh, we have a follow-up phone call together after the video critique. And then every week you send me new work and we and I critique it. And then we follow up with a telephone call and we talk about it. And this goes on for one month. Uh, it's every week and you get pretty much like a 45-minute to an hour-long critique of your artwork. Then a phone call that lasts anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour. Sometimes people really have a lot of questions and, and we just kind of talk it out. So I have one month coaching. I also offer two month coaching. 
And uh, I just added a new subscription coaching, and I think there's budgets for everybody. Now, who would even be interested in, in learning about the coaching? Well, if you're a high school student and you want to put together a portfolio uh, to get into or apply to an art college, I definitely, uh, that's me. I can help you there. I taught pre-college portfolio for about 10 years at the School of Visual Arts, so I know what they're looking for. Uh, if you're somebody who's into digital painting and you want to paint a little bit more realistic, but you just don't know what is the thing that is missing in your painting technique, I can help you there. If you're looking for stuff with figure drawing or landscape painting, I mean, I pretty much have done it all. I was an illustrator for about 18 years, and I painted just about everything that there is to paint traditionally in oils on book covers. That translates to drawing and it translates to digital painting. So again, I love YouTube and I spend my nights on YouTube watching all these videos and um, it's really fun and it's really informative, but sometimes you gotta go past just watching video tutorials and you need a professional who has experience teaching thousands of students to kind of just pinpoint what the issue is and, and to pinpoint uh, what is gonna help you to kind of conquer that issue that's been plaguing you improving your artwork. So again, if you're interested in the one-to-one -one co coaching, I have prices that I think will fit everyone's budget. It's pretty time, uh, it's, it's pretty, uh, takes a lot of time to kind of analyze your artwork um, do the video critiques, have the, the follow-up calls. So I think the prices are really, really good for the amount of work that goes into the one-to-one -one coaching. All of the links are below, and uh, I, I look forward to hearing you from you if you have any questions. So thanks again for watching, and look for a new uh, sketchbook video coming in a couple days. I'll talk to you soon.